All right, what up, guys? Mad Scientist 7890 here with MVP Shear via Skype um, on the RSTS Express Wrestling Channel here. And we're going to discuss a topic here that uh, has been rolling around all over YouTube, the internet, um, for the past couple weeks, and that's the basically the, the, the notes that The Rock had on his arm. Was it a work? Was it a shoot? Um, has WWE told The Rock to dumb down his promos and dumb down some of the stuff he's saying just because, you know, to let Cena get over on him? Um, or is it really all true? Is you know Cena getting the better of Rock? Um, we really don't know. We're gonna go through and just discuss a bunch of different rumors and different things. Um, every you know we both have interesting opinions on this and, and what we really think. We're both kind of up in the air on you know is it true? Is it fake? Whatever. So uh, I'll let you go ahead and shoot there. Go ahead, Mr. Shear. Yeah. Uh, the biggest problem for me and the worst thing for me is the WWE forcing the Rock to cut bad promos on purpose. If that's true. That's a big if that's true, because there's been so many conflicting reports. There's always so many rumors around WrestleMania at the time where everybody thinks, you know, they're an insider and they know what's going on. Oh, WWE's making The Rock promos on pur bad on purpose. Then it was, oh, WWE is letting The Rock and John Cena go out there and say whatever they want and seeing who is the best. Just letting them, you know, come up with their own stuff. Oh, The Rock had crib notes on his thing, but it was just a shoot, it, it, or it was a work, and then now it's a shoot, and then now it was an improvised line that Cena thrown in there. Like, I don't even know what, just where to begin, and even the thought process on this. I do know if the WWE is forcing The Rock to dumb it down, it's got to be the stupidest decision I've ever heard them come up with. Um, this is their biggest match in a, in a long, long while. This is a huge match. It's been start i mean the build started all of last year so the, if, if they're trying to dumb it down this should be the match i'm most interested in that's my big problem it should be the match i'm most interested in and i'm not i'm not even really interested i would honestly believe the rock is 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 coming up with dumbed down promos out there he's not captivating me at all and john cena is doing an okay job i guess yeah i mean it's interesting because you know i, I don't really want to sound like a you know a 10 year old 12 year old you know rock mark like, I, you know, back in that day when I was young, that, that's my guy, and I just want to be a mark for rock and say, you know, he's dumbing down his promos. But if you think of it realistically, I mean, you know, they're letting him go out there, cut a 20-minute promo. Did he ever really cut 20-minute promos when he was back in the, like, late 90s, early 2000s? Never. It's expected from The Rock, since he's not wrestling, to come out there and cut 20-minute promos as a main event on Raw. He's done it numerous times. Maybe it's just getting to him. Maybe he just is too busy. He just had to write the, the, the notes down on his arm. And maybe WWE just didn't even realize it. I mean, that, that, that is a possibility, and I know it sounds far-fetched because, oh, God, it's The Rock, and, you know, he, he's never been bad at cutting promos ever. He's always been the guy who's been this and been that. But there's always these rumors are, that are getting thrown out from backstage people that he had, you know, crib notes and, and cue cards and this and that. And you know, but still, at the end of the day, even if that's the you know the the deal, you still have to deliver. You still have to have good delivery. Now, with the promos he cut last week, where he was doing the history lessons, all that stuff was good and fine, because it was taped. Because he taped it, and it basically could have took many tapes, and he could have done it as good as he wanted to do, and then finally got it. But when he comes out there and he's been doing his things live, it almost seems like Cena's getting the better of him, and then it's you know, kind of like. You know, Cena's been there a while, and he's kind of comfortable. And The Rock is kind of hasn't been there, you know, in a while, and, and he's not. So I, it's really hard to, to really throw out there what's wrong, what's right. But it, you know, I don't want to pass by the idea that maybe The Rock is like kind of stuck, like he's not, you know, cutting promos as good as he is because they're they're expecting him to do 20 minute promos, and he's gonna get lost. I don't know. What do you think about that? Well, I I think. The WWE th he thinks The Rock is going to get over because he's the motherfucking Rock. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter what he says. If he goes out there and talks for 20 minutes, most of the live crowd is going to love it anyway. The, the, they're not going to like shit all over him if he's bad. He's the fucking Rock. Like People just love The Rock. And But I think it could also backfire in a sense that, you know, like... I, I, I don't know. I don't. I, 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 the problem is I don't know what the truth is in all of this. I don't know if he's really going out there and purposely being bad because i just don't i mean i've never been so like just un like uncaring of a rock promo like he just he's not captivating me he's not making me you know think long and hard about it. he's not making me think wow that was really good he's making me think wow that was really average like the last promo we did where him and cena finally had their like front to front face to face confrontation he said like a whole like 30 words 
and like half of it was about like John Cena being scared, and then he just kind of walked off. He's like, I he just kind of like, I don't even give a shit. I don't even want to be out here. I'm gonna leave. Like he was just like upset that John Cena was allowed to get the better. I I feel like he's uninspired in the ring cutting promos right now. I feel like he just doesn't even care. And I think a big problem is is, is it's come out they personally both don't like each other. So. In The Rock's point of view, you know, why even get over the feud? If Cena's going to go over in the end and The Rock doesn't like him, sure, he'll do business with him because it's good money. But there's no need for The Rock to put over Cena any more than he has to. So, I mean, if he's, if he, I mean, I think maybe inside he thinks, hey, if I'm not cutting great promos, though he tells me cut bad promos on purpose, I'm going to make sure they're really bad. That way this feud doesn't get over. That way Cena looks like shit in the end anyway, whether he beats me or not. Yeah. Now, it's, it's, it's interesting that you say it like that, too, because. Now, it makes me think with the way they're cutting these promos and the way they're doing this, the, the match itself is going to have such bad blood that in the actual match, the guys, you know, both guys, neither of them let, you know, let each other get over on each other. Like, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be a, you know, a Shawn Michaels, Hulk Hogan thing where, you know, Rock will oversell or Cena oversell and then we'll just be left with just a big mess and everyone will be really disappointed. Um, I don't want it to be like that because it, it is obvious that, that you know, it really is obvious these guys hate each other, um, and it's interesting. I don't know. If, I don't know if they hate each other. I think dislike is a better word. I don't know if they actually hate each other. All, I, I think The Rock hates the fact that Cena is calling him out a lot, though. I yeah. do think he. I, I do think it gets to him. I really think secretly it gets to him. But I think the crib notes thing really was was I think to The Rock crossing the line. Yeah, and I can not see that. TNA kind of way. But, but yeah, but yeah, we still don't. We like I said, we still do not know if if, if that was a planet or the Rock really did that. And that's the interesting thing about this. Um, the one thing I did want to throw out about this is, I know you haven't seen it, but the the Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart Greatest Rivalry DVD. They you know when they had to sit down with JR, they basically you know laid it out there and, and told everything that really happened. And and eighty percent of the the stuff that they did to each other. They talked over and they basically, you know, totally worked the crowd. Um, 80% of it, you know, except for, you know, the obvious ones of the screw job and a couple things, you know, towards the end where they really started getting at each other's throat. But 80% of the stuff they did, they talked it over. So if you have these two talking it over, I mean, could you have The Rock and Cena being like backstage being like, man, we got these guys in the palm of our hand. They think that we, they hate, we hate each other. We're doing this, we're doing that. We're making, you know, we're basically working the whole crowd. I mean, I, I definitely could see that because if they were doing uh, it back in the day, it seems like they could, they would do it now. I, the only reason I wouldn't see that is because The Rock isn't there on a you know a, a long basis. You know, I think he arrives. He probably arrives at Raw either right at Raw or halfway through Raw because you know he, he's got bigger things to do. It's it's not like it's totally different than Shawn Michaels Bret Hart because Shawn Michaels Bret Hart worked for the same company and were actually there every day yeah. in order to plan and talk out these parts. I don't think The Rock and John Cena are having phone conversations like, you know what I should do? I should bring up these crib notes on your arm, and it would be a great thing to get me over. And then The Rock thinks, that's a fantastic idea. Just run like 15 years of my promos, which I don't think is even that personally that big of a deal. I know some people are all up in arms about it. I mean, he wrote like a whole four words for a 20-minute promo. It wasn't like he wrote down word for word on his arm what he was going to say. I mean, it's, it's smart. I mean, it's bullet notes. I mean... You know, look, I mean, The Rock is a guy that can really say whatever the fuck he wants and have these crib notes and everything, and people are still going to trend worldwide, whatever he says. Yeah. Like, that's how big of a megastar he is. Yeah. And, I mean, he's already over. Rock is all, Rocky's always going to be over. I mean, it's never going to be any different. Anytime The Rock comes back, he's going to have his fans. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I think it would be interesting to see if they do Rock scene at WrestleMania 29 as well. And if any bad blood here would carry over more to that. Because I think they know they're going to do business here. And I think, you know, I think that's the match they might be leading to is another Rock Cena. Because Rock is supposed to be wrestling on WrestleMania 29. And I really don't see anybody else he could face that I would really care for him to face. And, yeah. you know, I mean, what, what if they have bad blood here, like Hogan Michaels, to where they don't even have the second match. And then that just screws up those plans. I don't, I don't know if they truly have any real bad blood they can personally dislike each other and personally be two different people but i mean they're gonna do what's ever good for business and anybody that wants to shit on the fact of you know 
Rock Cena main eventing WrestleMania, they can go fuck themselves because it's going to make them all a lot richer because this show is going to do huge fucking buy rates. Yeah, and I, and I know I remember hearing that there's word possibly of, of this you know, being a best of three, having this match here and then having another match at SummerSlam and then having the final match happen at you know WrestleMania 20, 29. Um, I don't know if that'd be a good move or a bad move, but I think it's interesting. The Rock has certain guys backing him, and, the, and Cena has certain guys backing him. And I think a lot of guys in the back, you know, the CM Punks and the Randy Ortons and those kind of guys who weren't around in that generation um, when The Rock was really big and in the stuff, are kind of shitting all over him and basically saying, you know, uh, he walks in here and thinks he's the shit and he does whatever he wants and blah, 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 blah. But then you have guys like Jericho and, and Triple H backing The Rock up and basically saying, you know, the guy's amazing. He can deliver a promo like nobody else and this and that and blah, blah, blah. So it is really interesting to see where this goes, um, and, you know, with the notes and the shoot and the work and all this, uh, you know, it's going to continue to get more interesting. They're going to have a rock concert and a rap battle thing with Cena, you know, with Cena coming up here. So, Which I think is dumb. I think is really dumb. I don't know how that advances the whole feud at all or anything. Can I say one? Th- let me say one thing, and I I'll, I can end on this part, and then you can go on and finish your thing. The biggest problem with WWE and this whole thing is instead of letting this feud be organic and play itself out, they are trying to force it to where it's half and half at WrestleMania. It's where you know they have a partial fan base who's going to be cheering for The Rock and a partial fan base is going to be cheering for Cena. They're trying way too hard to get that split vote down the middle on you know who you're going to be rooting for in that match. It's the like Twilight Seven thing. Said, it's, 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 it's the, the Team Edward versus Team Jacob, it and it it's is. dumb. Instead of just letting it be organic and just letting it happen the way it should be they are trying to force John Cena down our throats right now and I think that's dumb I think this should be a bigger deal than th- I mean it, it's such a big match I, why why kill any of the Rock's credibility on promos why do any of that why I mean I know he's not there as a you know a, a superstar all the time but I just feel like they should be doing a better job with this and they're handling this really badly Yeah, and it's almost the point of ruining it I, I see what you're saying and I see how they, they and it's interesting they're doing the, the, the Edward kind of Jacob thing like Twilight the team bring it versus Team Cena and it's, it's interesting to see where that that lies but I don't really think they want to make it like a dream match like I think a lot of people are like oh this is a dream match I really think they want to make it like bigger than life like a, like a Twilight thing and <laughs> it's interesting bigger to see than bigger than life itself yeah they, they, the WWE does that sometimes and they try to like control force the universe the, yeah they try to force things into place and it doesn't work all the time so uh, it's interesting to see where that lies but uh, you know it's, it's going to be weird to see where this goes with the concerts and whatnot um but yeah you let us know what you guys think about this this rivalry you're here who do you think it's a work you think it's a shoot your team bring it your team cena i mean do you yeah, not, do you not really, I, i'm personally i don't give a shit right now because i'm really not on any side i'm just hoping for a good match that's really all i want out of this yeah, feud. I, so I, I want it to be rock hogan with better wrestling that's exactly that's what, I, what I would hope for i hope that and i'm really hoping the crowd's there and i mean in the final question i'm gonna throw out there could this just be all just a just a blindfold for a Cena heel turn? Could it just be a blindfold to keep people occupied with something else, and then at the end the scene the, the swerve happens, or is it or is it just too obvious that he's going to turn here? I don't think he's going to turn here at all. I don't really think he's going to turn. I think if he was going to, they would have they would have planted more with the Kane storyline than they did. And I think Zack Ryder might be turning heel, and then he might feud with John Cena after all this. So I don't see Cena turning heel. That's there. an interesting thought. Which, which Ryder turning heel would be stupid if he goes with Eve. Just, uh, just that's for another day. Yeah. And I honestly, one more point. I really think Rock John Cena at the end of the year could be a match of the year candidate, just based on crowd reaction alone. That's possible. Yeah. If they let it, they let it build up, but go ahead. Yeah. So all right. Well, we're gonna get out of here, guys. Uh, I'm the mad scientist. For MVP Shear, this is RSTS Express Wrestling. Like I said, let us know what you guys think about this topic. Uh, what side you on? Shoot work. Basically, let us know the whole deal. All right, we're going to get out of here. And deuces.